near her house that she was kind enough to take me with her and all of the books there are significantly reduced from the original prices 70%. original <laughs> <laughs> from the original prices so we got a lot of books we did but that's what you do when I you're with really friends i blame you because <laughs> what? a lot of these books i picked up because you're like oh i found that one <laughs> yeah well i i blame you for the other ones as well so but we did reduce our books by about half yeah we went round, we picked up loads and loads. I was like struggling along with this basket overflowing <laughs> through these tiny corridors <laughs> of books. And then we managed to split it down to half as many. Otherwise, I'd have had to pay so much money. It would have been like £80 <laughs> for what I wanted. But that anyway, was reduced, wasn't it? <laughs> that was reduced. So, uh, we're going to show you some of what we got, or all of what we got, in fact. First thing. We got two books the same, didn't we? Two so books the same, yes. You'll talk about the first one. This one? Okay, so the first one we got is called The Disestablishment of Paradise, and it is by Philip Mann, who I believe has written quite a lot, but I've never heard of him, and we just looked him yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't have great ratings, but it's published by, it's Glanks. Published by Glanks, and it sounds really interesting. So it's about... Humans and... Uh, human... Humans. <laughs> you know that. It's about llamas. <laughs> It's about human settlers, farmers and scientists who've landed on like this other planet, I think, to like create a land for wealth for themselves. But then they're finding that nothing's going to grow and nothing will like grow. Well, everything's uh, growing. Yeah, it's well, the opposite. Everything's yeah, going nuts. But it says they find their crops won't grow and their lives becoming more dangerous. Because of the indigenous plants. I think it's about like plant life on the planet is basically trying to get them off the planet. The planet is rejecting them and they have to try and leave. But presumably stuff all goes wrong. Well, it says here that um, we'll uh, vicious reapers, deadly tattersall weeds, and we like oh, the cover, don't we? Yeah, I thought this was a dinosaur at first, but it's not. It's a big planty thing, I think, that's yeah. come alive. Because I thought it was like a um, diplodocus. Yeah, yeah, I know. But yeah. I don't think it actually is. It's some weird creature. So, should be a good one. Intriguing says wonderfully imaginative and then we both got this one because caitlin said she'd seen it from mercedes and we both love mercedes so we decided to get it so yay mercedes and i like Snake ropes by jess richards should you read the back shine. Shine. it is and it's a really like nice <laughs> it's one feeling. of those hardbacks without a dust jacket which yeah, is always good so. So the back says on an island off the edge of the map boys are disappearing Drama. 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 <laughs> the day the tall men come from the mainland to trade, Mary's little brother goes missing. She needs to find him. She needs to know a secret that no one else can tell her. And it says, Jess Richard's stunning debut will show you crows who become statues and sisters who get tangled in each other's hair, keys that talk and ghosts who demand to be buried. In the tradition of Angela Carter and Mayor Margaret Atwood, she combines a page-turning narrative and startling original voice with the creation and subversion of myths. Probably magical realism yeah, esque. It sounds brilliant, but it sounds really, really interesting. So I'm hopeful that it's we'll so like pretty. this. Yeah. And it is a very beautiful book. So fingers crossed. The next one I picked up is this one. It is In the Shadow of Blackbirds by Cat Winters. And I've seen this on a couple of people's channels a while back. It's got ghosts and elements of spirit photography and science minded people. So I'm hoping it might be a kind of like gothic y, yeah, and it's won a lot of awards, YA <laughs> mixture thing. It won a lot of awards, so it's won a debut award find, oh, finalist, um, but it won a school library journal best book in 2013 and best fiction for young adults. I'll give this one a go. I also have to say that the cover creeps me out because look at that woman, she's just like staring. Look how creepy that yeah, is. It's I think this must be like the spirit photography that they're doing. Yeah. Because it looks like there's some it's sort of spirit behind it. Person behind her. <laughs> yeah, I could Creepy. That. So um, oh, I'm going to talk about this book because I've seen it quite a bit and I'm interested. I've heard mixed reviews actually. It's called Season to Taste or How to Eat Your Husband by Natalie Young. And from what I can remember, this Jamie is about... Be worried. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Sorry. It's about a 50-something housewife who lives in a cottage in the woods with her dog. 
Um, and she's just a general, I think she's meant to be like, you know, your typical like cupcake yeah. making, okay. lovely housewifey nice type. Yeah. yeah. And then it says no one's seen her husband for a while. And it turns out that she's like hit him over the head and she's like eating him slowly. But it says um, in the blurb, dark, Ooh. funny and achingly human, seasoned to taste is a deliciously subversive treat in the shape of Lizzie Prane. Natalie Young has created the most remarkable heroines um, in recent fiction. So Lord knows what her husband's done to deserve eating. Yeah. But I liked <laughs> sure. that as well with the knife and fork and on the back it's got a load of cleavers. So I'm yeah, I'm intrigued to see what I think of this one because, you know, a bit of cannibalism never goes amiss. <laughs> Definitely. It's what we're all about here yeah. <laughs> on my channel. <laughs> okay, the next one I picked up is Old Venus, which is edited together by George R. R. Martin and Gardner Desois. However, this is not written by them. I'm not sure if they've actually got any stuff within it. It's a collection of short stories by various different authors, all to do with Venus in some way. And some of the people on the back who are included are Elizabeth Bear, Darth Nix, Lavi Tidhar, so a couple of big names and then some that I've not heard of. So I'll be interested to sort of see how I get on with them. But I don't really know any more than that. But I know that they've got another one called Old Mars, I think. So if I like this, I might pick that up too. So the next one I picked up is called The Elite by Natasha Nig Nigan. I think this is definitely a YA. And I literally picked this up because I loved the cover. It's got some Chinese references, which I really like. Books set in China. A um, hundred years into the future, only one city has survived. Neo Babel, a melting pot of cultures and people and fear and discrimination. As a red, an ethnic Chinese, Silver could never have dreamed of becoming an elite, a guard of the city's council, yet she is now on the brink of her first major covert assignment. But when her parents go missing, she's forced to confront the outside life, behind the walls of Neo Babel, uh, plunged into a strange new world of slums and dissidents and secret splinter groups and deeply guarded secrets. And this is one of the hockey books, and I love that because they put a little swirly whirl on the back and put what it's about, and this says combat, conspiracy, love and belonging, so... I think that sounds like it's going to be good. I like that. That's yeah. a good idea, actually, having like keywords. Yeah. Like so Definitely. Fingers crossed for that one. Sounds good, sounds good. The next one I got is this one. It is called Conquest, and it's by John Connolly and Jennifer Ridgeyard. John Connolly, when I went to FantasyCon, was really great. Like, a really, really charismatic, funny person who was just really endearing. And so I don't have any of his books, but this one sounded interesting. It says on the back, we have long been suppressed, we will not be broken, and we will have our revenge. So that's always interesting. Earth is no longer ours. It is ruled by the Ilri, a beautiful, civilised, yet ruthless alien species. But humankind has not given up the fight, and Paul Kerr is one of the new generation of the young resistance leaders waging war on the invaders. And then there's another person who's the first of the Ilri to be born on Earth. I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> so Still I'm not going to try. <laughs> Trapped within the walls of her father's stronghold and hated by the humans, she longs to escape. But on her 16th birthday, Sil's life will change forever, and she will become an outcast, an enemy of her people, for daring to save the life of one human, Paul Kerr. So, I, I want that one. Why didn't I see that? You never showed me that one. <laughs> That's because you like powered off down the aisle, and I was oh. like, "Oh, what is this?" Oh, I want to know. So what it that sounds interesting, like. and I will report back. Let you know. Yeah, sounds cool then. It does. So my next one I picked up because you may have seen on Caitlin's channel that we went up to London recently and I found an arc of a book that Caitlin really wanted and so because I'm such a kind and generous person I let her have it but mainly because she just kept going on about how she wanted it and how I hadn't let her have it. <laughs> so I, I did was, buy it off you with a brownie. With a brownie. I was entirely bribed by a brownie and it was from a second hand bookshop so it's not like I paid full price and you know she paid me off the brownie which is fair dues. Yeah. So um and I hadn't read anything by this author and she had and so I So thought, I was more entitled to Yeah, the she was probably more entitled. And then when we were there today I saw the book that she read that she really liked, which is why she wanted that book. So long story short, I picked up Theatre of the Gods <laughs> by M. Sudain. And obviously you're on Caitlin's channel, so you probably know more about this than I do. Mm. I can give you a little synopsis. Go on, give us a synopsis. Okay, it's about a man who goes into space because he believes that he can jump into another dimension. He's a really wacky inventor. Everyone in the world thinks he's absolutely balmy because he comes up with absolutely insane inventions. Like Beauty and the Beast, uh, like Belle's dad in Beauty and the Beast. 
<laughs> yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a little bit like bizarre, sort yeah. of tinkering around doing bizarre stuff. But in this, space travel is a thing. So like, he can go off into space and thinks that he's found another dimension. However, when he comes back to Earth in that new dimension, everyone's like, "We just saw you leave," and he's like, "No, no, no, I'm definitely in a new dimension." So he's convinced that he's skipped to another one. Along the way, he meets a crew of various other people, one of which is a girl who's frozen in a block of ice and comes back to life, and a blind boy. And they sort of sail around space on a mission for the Queen. Ooh, and it gets it. really wacky, and it's very bizarre, but it's fun, it's amusing, it's just filled with like loads of funny things that I laughed at. And right at the very back, there's a page called The Little Page of Calmness, and every now and then, when it gets a bit intense, it says you can always turn to the little page of calmness if you need a break. And I did that multiple times and it just made me really happy because it's quite a calm, nice little page. It's really great. So it's so funny, but it's like really hard to explain because it doesn't do it justice. It's got a pirate ship on space. Yeah, so. it's gorgeous. That sounds well, good. So. Oh, well, I shall be looking forward to trying this one. So it's a bit wacky, but wonderful. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully you'll like it. Okay, next one. So the next one I have is this one, which is In Dark Service, and it is by Stefan Hunt. I've seen this on someone's channel. I cannot remember for the life of me who it is. But I'm sure that Elizabeth. they said, I thought it might be Elizabeth. I'm not sure if it is. So if it's not you, Soz, <laughs> it is, then excellent. But I can't remember who it was. And it's, I think it's a sort of steampunky one, but I'm not sure. It's definitely like piratey. It says, never tell a carnine the odds. Jacob Carnine has settled down, he's minding his own business while raising his son, Carter, on those days when the boy hasn't got into another scrape. His days of adventure are thankfully long behind him. Carter Carnine is going out of his mind with boredom and longs for the opportunity to escape, to test himself against whatever the world has to offer, and the world has plans for them both. Carter's moment will come. Kidnapped by slavers, he has all the adventure he ever wanted and no choices. Okay, so he is kidnapped by a slaver. So maybe it is on ship. A short and brutal existence and a harsh death await him. Jacob's past has caught up with him and he will tear the world down to reclaim his son. He was a law-abiding man, now he's the one making the rules. Drama, drama, drama! <laughs> that reminds me of that one, um, oh, that film. Where, Another film? The film where the dad's always having to go and chase his wife oh, and yeah, daughter and I know, get kidnapped. I know, what, oh, I know the one you mean, yeah. There's like three or four of them now. Is it Taken? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. That makes yeah. me think of that, but with some yeah, steampunk Yeah, but with like some sailing maybe, or... S I don't know why I think sailing. it's sailing. But I feel like it is. Is it a um the far called sequel? So maybe it's the start in the series? I think it is. I think there's another one. Volume one, yeah. Ooh, Ooh and it's Max! <laughs> Shiny. Yeah, I like a good map. So do I. Who doesn't? I'm really jealous now. I wish I'd bought all these books again. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the good ones. Boom. Well you said I offered you this one, didn't I? I said you I could know, get this. I was, and then you you it's too it. much when you're there. It's too much to take in that you're like, yeah. what what should I do? Okay. okay. Over okay. You. So the next one I picked up is called Glorious Angels by Justina Robson. I really liked the front cover of this. Mm. And I I think I saw Justina Robson when I went to a Waterstones Piccadilly a, like fantasy event. Oh, and gosh. I'm sure I really liked her and I've heard that she's really good. Um this I nearly says, bought this one as well. Yeah, very nearly. <laughs> It says, on a world without even a name, Tra Trelane Huntingor, heiress of an ancient but defunct line of mages, eccentric, erratic, renowned as a scientist, in the prime of her beauty at 38, mother of two daughters, uh, the one slight, fair and scholarly, the other dark, fierce and curved like a violin. <laughs> Trelane lives in the towering spire of Grimshard, one of the eight, a city of mages. The mages of Grimshard have made their reputations, learnt their trade by digging up relics of the past and discovering how they work. But now the future is pressing, the empire is shaking, the war in the south is going badly, and even the unknowable, utterly alien Karu have been touched by her. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, factions within Grimshard are eyeing power, and in the far forests at the most important archaeological site ever found, the death toll is mounting. Oh, I should have bought this one. Yeah, Sounds there is really no time. There is no time to have daughters who are testing their strength against you in the world. Um, so, in Justina Robson's own words, "Glorious Angels" began as a novel set in a society in which females were by nature the top of the social hierarchies. What emerged isn't meant as a manifesto or a conclusion on that. It's not a "What if women ruled the world" book at all. It's its own odd thing. Yeah, that sounds good. 
I should have got that one. It does sound good, so Yay. I might have to pick that up at some point. If you like it, next one I got is a classic in science fiction. This is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes, which I am overdue to read, really. Some sci-fi masterworks. I have not actually bought any of them up until now, so now I have this one and the other one that I will show you in a minute. So Flowers for Algernon, as far as I understand it, it's about this mouse that they do genetic testing on. I know that Leanne from Literary Diversion says this is one of her Loads favourite books. Loads of people love it. Yeah. I know Amanda really loves it from Amanda Eggle. I'm sure that like Joe and people like that have read it as well. Is it, set, is it written from the mouse's point of view? I'm not really sure. It, it says Charlie Gordon, IQ 68, is a floor sweeper and the gentle butt of everyone's jokes until an experiment in the enhancement of human intelligence turns him into a genius. Then Algernon, the mouse whose triumphal experiment transformation precedes his, fades and dies, and Charlie has to face the possibility that his salvation is only temporary. Okay. So That's yeah, they Not test on the mouse and then test on the first human. human. Yeah. Wouldn't want to be Charlie. <laughs> Ethical. Ethical. Yeah, whether because he's a floor sweeper, I wonder if they just used him. Yeah, I guess so. Illegally. Sneaky. So that's that one and it's not too long as most of the older sci-fi is so it's like 200 ish pages you should be able to get through this one quickly and hopefully you love it yeah so i picked up this one purely on the back really i did read the blurb um roboteer by alex lamb um and it says in the front war is hard space is harder <laughs> and i just thought this sounded like my sort of like space opera romp it says one species one universe two sides the human race has spread to the stars those few who live in the wastes of space have been forced to adapt themselves with technology and genetic modification. I love anything where like people are modifying themselves. Yeah. Um, for the billions left on Earth, trapped in squalor and gripped by a new religious fervour, those who have tampered with the human form are heretics, and so the unequal war begins. The Earthers have deployed a de devastating new weapon. Only one outworlder ship can be spared to investigate this new threat, and on board, his mind linked to the ship's drones and weaponry, is their brand new roboteer. I feel like we need some sort of theme music. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what will they find will change the universe and the human race? Never. Bum, bum, bum. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. And my last one is this one. It is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. Now, I read Man in the High Castle earlier this year by Philip K. Dick, and I liked it, but I found his writing super weird. So I'm hopeful that this will be the same. <laughs> um, I've heard good things about this one. War has left Earth devastated. Through its ruins, bounty hunter Rick Deckard stalks in search of the renegade replicants who are his prey. When he isn't retiring them, he dreams of owning the ultimate status symbol, a live animal. Then Rick gets a big assignment to kill six Nexus 6 targets for a huge reward. But things are never that simple, and Rick's life quickly turns into a nightmare, kaleidoscope of subterfuge and deceit. So I'm guessing this world is pretty messed up if there are no live animals, and that's like the status yeah. of your <laughs> sim. It makes symbol. me think a little bit of Saga, where they've got like that pet cat thing. Yeah. <laughs> like that's like yeah. a massive sign. So again, I hope that I like this, and it's not too long. Those two, I'm really interested in those masterworks. Yeah, I'll definitely have to see like how I go are. with them. They do look nice next to each other, don't they? Like, yeah, fine, so. you can stop collecting them now. You've I started. might, yeah. Now that I've uh, now that I've begun, it's a slippery how many slope. Books have you so that is everything. I think you'll agree that we got quite a lot of books, quite yeah. a good haul. Hopefully, we can do some buddy reads of the two that we got. And then we're seventy percent off. So yes, that is pretty good. And if you've seen anything in this haul that you think sounds particularly good, then let us know so that we can bump that one up and hopefully get to it a bit sooner. Thank you all for watching. Bye. Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.